Hello everyone, and welcome to my channel. And today I'll be reading a multi-character listener by me. So let's get into it. Xiao. Xiao had never felt so helpless before. He had always prided himself on his strength and ability to protect those he cared about. But when he saw you bleeding nonstop, he had an absolute meltdown. Please, please survive, Wyon. He whispered to himself as he carried your cold body back to the inn where the rest of your friends were staying. Trolley, Ganyu, Lumin, and Paimon were all there, waiting anxiously for your return. And as soon as Xiao entered the room, he rushed over to where Ganyu, Cloud Returner, and Trolley were tending to you. How is she? He asked, his eyes shaking with fear. He couldn't handle it. The mere idea of losing you shook him to the very core. One sees that your friend is alright, and is awake, but... Cloud Retainer began, but Chao zoomed past her, not wanting to hear any more. He heard enough. He saw you lying there, looking weak and fragile, and he couldn't hold back his tears any longer. It's my fault, he sobbed. I should have protected you. I should have done better. You tried to assure him to the best of your ability, but it didn't seem to help. Not at all. I'm so sorry, Xiao. I promise to take double precautions about my safety from now on. Trust me on that. You said, hoping that it will at least do to ease his worries in the future. But I'm okay. I promise you. I'll be fine. And you don't have to worry about me so much. He shook his head. His eyes were so filled with tears. He couldn't bear the thought of losing you. And he knew that he had to do everything in his power to keep you safe. But as for trusting you, he will. Just make sure to do good on that promise you gave him. Skirmish. Skirmish blamed himself entirely for what happened to you. He had never intended for things to go so, so wrong. And he would do anything in the world to make sure that you were okay. When he had intended to transform himself into an Archon, he didn't think he would end up hurting you in the process. But here you were, hurting and in pain, all because of him and his selfishness. He didn't know the process would make him lose part of himself when he was in that thing. That he wouldn't recognize you as well. That he would end up hurting you when he tried to talk to him. And as soon as he realized, he stopped it. And when he rushed you to the doctor, desperate for any news about your condition, he found out that the doctor was only saving you for his own benefit, to be able to use Kira again. He was serious. I don't care what you want. He snarled. Just make sure she's okay. When you end up in a coma, Skirmish blamed himself over and over again. He couldn't stop thinking about what he could have done differently. And what he could have done to stop all of this. To listen to you for once. And he would often cry himself to sleep at night. If he got any sleep at all. He was by her side all the time. And his only chance at sleep would be whenever he passed out, from the sheer tiredness. Once you woke up, he was all over you, showering you with his love and affection, and apologies as well. I don't want to be a narcon anymore, he said, his voice filled with emotion. I just want to be with you. He nodded, understanding how he felt. He had lost too much. Way too much. He couldn't handle losing you. You were his heart. Everything he had loved and wished for in this world. And without you, life would have no meaning to him. 
together. You decided to leave the Petunian and run away. To start a new life. Away from the chaos and danger of the world that you had finally left behind. Venti. Venti went through four stages of grief after hearing about her condition. He was devastated and didn't know what to do. He used his healing powers to try and help you, but it seemed like nothing he did was working. He stayed by your side at all times, barely eating or sleeping. His eyes were puffy and red, and he looked like he was in terrible condition. He couldn't handle this. Not again. Perhaps, if you could have done something differently, if he paid more attention to the situation, things wouldn't have ended so terribly. The other Archons were worried about him. That you couldn't focus on anything except for you. When she cried every passing minute, that your eyes were closed. And his heart ached at the thought of losing you. At the thought of not being able to see those eyes, those beautiful eyes of yours, often again. Of that smile. He would have lost everything then. Truly, in every sense of the word. When you finally woke up, Venti was overcome with emotions. He hugged you tightly, refusing to let go of you. Thank the Archons, he said, not realizing the irony of that. His voice was simply filled with relief, and he just wanted to be with you, to hold you, for as long as he possibly could. He promised to never let anything bad happen to you again, not in his watch, and made sure to take extra precautions to keep you safe. You were his world, and what kind of Arkham would he be if he didn't do anything to protect you? To him, your precious treasure, and seeing your face, made him have hope for the future. It made him smile genuinely, all the way from his heart in a way that he never felt before. And the thought of losing you, he just doesn't think he will be able to recover from it. And honestly, the world shouldn't have to lose you too. You are such a wonderful gift to it, always bringing happiness to those around you, and mostly to him. He felt lucky to be able to have you by his side, and he would be kind of a fool not to be able to treasure that, and make sure... That you are appreciated, and most importantly, safe and sound. <laughs>